And when we encapsulate BKC into hydrosol, we get a nice and clear solution. Now, how uh, BKC actually work, hydrosol BKC, um, I will use this animation to explain the process. So uh, here we see the um, here we see the microsphere. Now it's drying out. As it dries out, it forms a nice film. Uh, the film can spread over, over I mean above the particle itself. So it adheres to the surface, very thin layer. So this is the way that it can stay and it can stay forever. However, the body, um, of course, was firing and there was contact with water. The water, uh, the water is able to dissolve the polymer. The polymer will not go back to the situation it was before, just break down. This is the unique function of this polymer and the material now is available to be released. Now the material comes to the surface uh, and we know that it takes a few minutes, by the way, so it doesn't kill immediately. But now the material is on the surface and the moment it comes in contact with microbes, uh, immediately it will kill the microbes. Now, if it's getting dry again, it will retain some of the BKC. If it's totally washed out, then of course there is no more BKC. So this is what we call a water trigger. You see another wave of water is coming. The second wave will again uh, expose more of the BKC. And you understand the logic is bacteria and viruses can spread only with water. So they need the water to live, um, like we. So water is the trigger for exposure and release. So that's why we cannot say how long it will release. It depends how long is, um, or how much water you actually uh, approached it. Now, when we do experiment with antibacterial, um, what do we do? So um, how do we validate claims of bacteria stat or bacteria site? Bacteria stat is maintaining a certain level of bacteria, but not killing it. Um, so we have two methods and I will explain you the method and then I will relate to in the results. So you better listen clearly how we do it. It may be a method that you're not familiar with. Hygiena. Hygiena is the name of the equipment that we use. This is the Hygiena. Hygiena is a device that you can use. It's a portable device. Um, and it's based on measuring the amount of ATP. ATP, adenosine triphosphate, is an indicator for uh, process bacteria that are live producing ATP. And there is a correlation between the reading and the number of colonies in a traditional way. This is the device. The device has two ends. And number one, the blue one, is a sponge. And this sponge, uh, we bring it into a contact uh, with, uh, with, uh, uh, with the surface. The other end of the device, number two, is the liquid. So what we do is we just snap number two after we expose number one to the surface and it comes in a package like this. Uh, it's called the Ultra Snap ATP Surface Test. Um, it's not an expensive method. It's very commonly used. Uh, we use it not only for um, this kind of testing, but in order to clean, to test that the vessels that we uh, use for production are clean. So uh, we stick this uh, number one side into the machine and we get the number and this indicates uh, the activity. Uh, we tested it on hard surface such as tiles. For example, we tested it in the public bathroom. And then of course we tested it on hands to determine how effective the material that we offering is it. Uh, another method, more traditional method, it's called the zone of inhibition. In this case, uh, we grow bacteria of choice on petri dishes. And uh, so first of all, we grow the bacteria on the petri dishes, we incubate it so the bacteria is happy. Then we take pieces, round pieces of paper, we soak them into the hydrosol. We apply the paper on 
the location of test and we are measuring the zone of inhibition. What is the zone? As you can see on the right side, this is the area that's clear from bacteria. So the surface become clear, there is no bacteria here, and this is the zone. We can measure the zone, the size of the diameter, and this is the parameter that we use to determine the ability to kill bacteria. This is called the zone of inhibition, and here you see, uh, tested with different concentration, and uh, so this is how we determine the concentration that uh, we should use in order to kill the bacteria. Again, these are two methods to measure antibacterial activity. So now we covered the method, now let's look at the experiment itself. So in order to test it, we use hydrosal BKC. We incorporated hydrosal BKC, you see in picture A, into a base, any kind of a body wash. And the body wash has a color, so it's absorbed the color of the body wash. It's practically a clear and could be clear. What we measured here is something else. In addition to what I told you before, we are measuring analytical how much BKC remained on the skin over time. So over time, and this is used from a lotion. A lotion, one lotion was containing the free BKC and the other one containing a lotion with hydrosal BKC. And what you see here, this is the amount in percent of the initial as a function of time. Every hour we take a, mess, a sample and we measure it over six hours. So what you can see here, the level of BKC all the starts are the same. Uh, you see that the free BKC broke down uh, pretty much. And after about uh, three to four hours, we get about 40% of what we started, uh, typically below the minimum inhibition concentration. So it does, it's not effective, in other words. However, when we use the hydrosal BKC, you see that it goes slowly down. And after about four hours, we lost 40, but we still have over half. And this is now effective level because we typically use twice as much as the minimum inhibition concentration. So we, here we learn that the amount of the BKC stays, and this is an indication that we don't lose it. Now the question is, does it really work better than the free? So this is a test that we did with bacteria, but here we looked at the zone of inhibition. You see in the y-axis, we are measuring it with millimeters. And the both we see here after the first day, after the first day, so one day um, in uh, incubation, we see that the hydrosal BKC provided a significantly higher zone of inhibition compared to the free. You see the standard, in, standard deviation showing you that the two numbers are significant. So hydrosal definitely provide a longer uh, inhibition compared to the free. The same thing at, at day two, but overall the diameter significantly reduced for both. But still, the encapsulated provide a longer activity, uh, longer lasting activity compared to the free BKC. So um, this is what we learned about BKC. Uh, number one, um, in the bathroom, we, sh we, sh we show that hydrosal BKC can prolong the protection for six hours, but of course, over time, the efficiency goes down. And over the second day, it's still killing, but the killing ability is reduced to about 70%. So bottom line is, hydrosal BKC is good for a day. Um, a day, I mean about six, seven, hours uh, or maybe a little bit less but still you don't need to wash your hands every 15 minutes to protect yourself. So this is the ability of BKC and hydrosal BKC to extend the protection on the skin.